So, how you doing? Yeah, I'm, sure. I'm keeping a low energy right there until I have to start. It's okay, it's okay, don't worry. You did a great job in this, so good. Oh, thank you. Okay, congratulations. Um, one of my favorite shows, and I have to say, were you freaked out when you found out you were going to play the Phantom? It happened over a long course. I was told, you've got this role, but we can't announce it yet. So you still think something's going to go wrong, it's not going to happen. So when I found out, it wasn't such a big surprise, you know, but then it hits you. Okay, it's easy to say, hey, I can do this, give me the job. And then when they give you, you kind of go, well, actually, now I have to do it. You know, then the pressure's on. So there was a lot of pressure, but... You know, it was also, it was all things, you know, I mean, it was pressure, it was scary, it was tough, but it was also beautiful and rewarding and, and interesting and, and um, so, yeah. Where did you even start to prepare? Yeah. Especially, again, it's the emotional part of the Phantom. Not so much, okay, you can voice train, but there's a lot of backstory with this guy. There's a lot of backstory, but you know what, in some ways that's the easiest part that, that I discovered. Um, when I first read this script, I, I instinctively was in touch with this character in, in so many levels, I felt. And, and, and then, if you, orig if you initially, originally feel that, then that's, you've got a lot to work with, you know. So, so it's a mixture of what I've done and then also what, when you're, when you're involved in a brilliant story, it's easy to become involved in that as a character, you know, and the story is so powerful and the music is, you know, backed up by this wonderful music which is very swirling and, and, and emotional that really kind of guides you, yeah. you know, in your journey, then that that takes you uh, through a huge part of your uh, emotional journey. Yeah. Take me back to your audition. What on earth was it like to stand in front of Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber and sing one of his amazing songs? Um, well, it was... It was pretty hairy, um, especially because I wasn't a singer yeah. and I had taken a, a few lessons and I'd already, I'd already kind of had a test with the musical director, you know, I'd sung with him I think two or three times and he had basically said, you, you can do this, as had my singing coach. So I had a bit of confidence but it all hit me when I was suddenly standing in front of Andrew Lloyd Webber and, and you realise the, just the size of the task you're undertaking or what is actually happening in that room in that moment, you know, that me, Jerry Butler, who's not a singer, you know, um, is now singing for Andrew Lloyd Webber, one of the greatest composers of all time, one of the most famous songs of all time. And uh, it was also the first time Joel Schumacher had heard mm -hmm. me sing, and Austin Shaw, the producer. There was just the three of them in the room, and, and Simon Lee playing the piano. So it was nerve-wracking. My, my my leg took on a life of its own, and uh, and I couldn't stop it. You know, yeah. it just started, I thought, can they see this? It was just shaking, and and Simon's going, <gasps> breathe, <gasps> breathe, you know. Um, it was funny. I look back now and I laugh. Yeah, and I understand the night before you were watching your beloved Celtics and you couldn't scream because you had to save your voice. Couldn't do a thing. I was there with like <laughs> ten guys who were like, "Come on, yeah, man!" You know, shouting, swearing, screaming, and they're going, "Come on, Jay, yeah, man!" And I said, "I can't, I can't, yeah. and I can't raise my voice. I'm singing for Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber tomorrow." Um, <laughs> And uh, it was, it was, it was very funny, you know. Oh, I can imagine. You take a, you take a, you know, a lot of abuse from your mates in Glasgow if you if you behave like that. Okay, I'm sure they forgave you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now tell me about working with Emmy. My goodness, was she not born to play Christine Dye? Absolutely. You know, I mean, she was born to play it. She's been trained to play it. You know, I, I mean, she's been studying all the elements of Christine since she was five. You know, the singing, the dancing, the acting. She's been acting for longer than I have. You know, it's, it's kind of uh, uh, funny, but. Um, and when she came in for a screen test, I was behind Joel. I kept, you know, I stayed very quiet during all of that. But when she walked on, I grabbed Joel, you know, shook him by the shoulders and said, she hadn't even sung yet. And I said, that's, that's Christy. And, um, and even thinking that, she still surpassed what any of us could have dreamed she was capable of doing. She's so committed and passionate. And, yeah, you know, and she's a very confident young girl, knows exactly what she wants, knows what she wants to say, what she wants to do. Do you feel sorry for the Phantom? Or did you? Did you have to go there? Yeah, I, I, I think I felt too sorry for the Phantom. I could forgive him and all the um, and all the problems that he caused and his controlling and his manipulation and his violence, you know. I, I really, um, I think if you can have sympathy for your characters, if it works like that, mm -hmm. then it's a really interesting way to explain why you do what you do rather than just to do bad things you yeah. know why is why is he doing what he's doing you know and if you take back his whole story and you realize what he has been through and what the world has done to him um 
I could understand why he did what he did back to the world. Yeah, makes and, it a little easier. Yeah, and I tried to give him some dignity in those earlier moments that, that, that I thought kind of empowered the, the, the later moments when he actually is just purely losing his mind. He yeah. can't control his life anymore or his actions. Yeah. But I didn't always feel that he was always capable of murder and the violence that happens later on in the story. Mm -hmm. It's just all gone too far. Yeah. Why was Joel Schumacher the perfect director for this? Because Joel has an innate understanding of this story. You know, to, see, a, a, a lot of people said, why, why are they making the movie, or can this be made into a movie? But I had the benefit of reading his screenplay, which I could see was just incredibly cinematic and had so many beautiful moments and touches that he'd added in. Mm -hmm. And uh, but everything about this story is Joel Schumacher, you know, in terms of the the, the set designs and the costumes, you know, he he just understand and relishes, you know, the, 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 um, that visual impact that something can have. So he was so in control of all of that, and is you know an old romantic at heart. Uh, you know, he he understood the romance in the story. He kind of sexed it up a bit, and then allowed us to I think to really give it the heart. Yeah. You know. In my humble opinion, you're far too good looking to be wearing your mask the whole time. Just had to tell you that. But <laughs> what was it like putting that on and oh my goodness. Just the prosthetics and everything. You know, all in all, that's great because when you're taking on a role, you know, there's many roles where you're just you're like yourself. So it's fantastic sometimes to abandon yourself to a role and get all dressed up, you know, including all the costumes and the mask, and it really helps you yeah. take yourself somewhere completely different, which you kind of have to do for the Phantom. But then it was a little weird as well because, you know, you're trying to perform a very difficult role and then somebody sticks this thing on your face with double-sided sticky tape and, you know, and then again, you used it to your advantage. It was also kind of empowering to have that and know, you know, the know what that, in s the feelings that that installed in other people when, when you know, they, mm -hmm. they saw it. Absolutely. Your favorite musical part scene. What did you love doing the most? Oh, there were so many moments in this movie I loved. Um, music of the night was very special to me. To sing, to perform, I think maybe, oh God, I don't know, past the point of no return, yeah. or masquerade by the, you know, with the, with the little monkey. Yeah. It was one of the most beautiful things I ever felt as an actor and then I felt it time and time again just sitting there I don't know what it was just breaking my heart it over is, this. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's awesome I have to say I saw Dear Frankie you are spectacular in that movie take me back to that doorway scene how hard was it to do because Emily Mortimer said she could have done it for a hundred years <laughs> it, well, yeah, oh Emily I, you know Emily's favorite actress I ever worked with she's the coolest funniest nicest most down-to-earth girl and she is such an interesting actor to, to, you know, just amazing, and um, but that kissing scene uh, it is incredible. Uh, and when we did it, it was so filled with with feeling, and yet nothing happened. I mean, it must be the longest yeah. kiss coming in movie history. And when you watch it, you're like, oh, you, gotta, you know, it, it was. Um, and, and we actually then it became you know, we we tried so many takes, that, you know, and, and see how long we could extend that moment. And it's kind of ridiculous how long it takes, but. It's one of the most powerful things when you you know when you watch that movie. I totally agree. It's a great movie. I can't wait for people to see it as I well. I can. I'm so proud of that movie. Well, best of luck in everything, and uh, you know what? You just you're just great. It's such a pleasure to talk oh, to you. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you.